Welcome back to Continuing the Conversation. I'm Shaleen, and today we're diving into something that's been keeping me up at night. Picture this, you're 25, fresh out of college, ready to climb the career ladder. You landed that entry-level job in tech, finance, or consulting. You're thinking, this is my launch pad. But what if I told you that launch pad is about to vanish? Dario Amade, CEO of Anthropic, one of the companies building one of the top AIs that's reshaping everything, just issued a warning. And I need you to hear it loud and clear. AI could eliminate half of all entry level white collar jobs in the next one to five years. This isn't something in the distant future. This is the ladder that is being yanked away while people are still mid climb or just starting out. Today, we're confronting what I'm calling the entry level apocalypse. And to help us make sense of it and what we can actually do about it, I'm joined by my good friend Rob, the CEO of Charm IQ. Now, Rob, this isn't just another AI will make us more productive conversation, is it? Thanks, Jeline. And yes. no, we never really talk about the AI makes us more productive conversation. Yeah. We're always trying to talk about. How does it, is this different? What is this thing that we're talking about? Yes. So Rob, let's start with the hard truth. Amade said specifically, he called out entry level roles in tech, finance, law, and consulting. Why are these jobs, the traditional career starting points, suddenly in AI's crosshairs? And what makes them so vulnerable? Great question, Shalene. One Basically, the reason he's picking those specific ones is that that's where, if you look at the bumps in the graph as to where... So let me almost even go back further. So how do, how do these AI companies measure performance of these models? We talked about this a, a few podcasts ago. There's a bunch of standard benchmarks that you can go through. So given that there's a set of standard benchmarks, they just so happen to be in things like tech, in finance, in law... And, and things like consulting, which is a bit of a general bucket. And even math, and which is kind of interesting that you don't see in this list. You, one of the main things that there is is tests for math and general skills like that. So it, it's there's a part of me that just says that the reason why these have been called out is that these are the areas in which these benchmarks already exist. There's other, like, there's not a marketing benchmark, for example. <laughs> I would be even hard pressed myself to figure that out. So I would say teasing this apart, because um, we have to kind of look at this from a few angles. Like, are the other ones safe or are, why are these ones being called out and so forth? And what I would say is, again, I think these are specifically called out because they match benchmarks that already exist. And why are there benchmarks there? Just because somebody had a need and they created a benchmark. If there's never been a benchmark made in, I don't even, can't even think of it. I'll just pick marketing again because I was just thinking about it. Like if there isn't a marketing benchmark for somebody who works in that field, then then there's no way to tell if this has gotten better or worse. Right. Again, no, with respect to these things. Yep. Um, so that's why I think specifically these were being called out. I don't think that they're special in any way, shape or form. Now, given our other podcasts and things like that, you know that there's other areas in which these things are. So again, marketing is one of those things. Yes. If you look at copy creation and translators and all of these other types of fields, which, which again, we're not specifically measuring in these cases, those are similarly vulnerable. And um, there's been a bunch of studies that did uh, vulnerability checks. There's actually a stack ranking that they did, I would say about six to eight months ago, where they took all of these different industries and they said, well, which ones are most susceptible to it by looking at the individual skills and then breaking it down and seeing which ones does AI today, Gen AI specifically, affect and things like that. So, so that's one side. So like, there are there specific fields being called out? Yes. Again, we have stack ranking and so forth. Are there reasons why they might be called out? Yes. Again, we have benchmarks. And now, like, why are entry-level positions so vulnerable? Well, I would say what's really interesting about this is if the opposite was true, if somehow this was, I, I mean, I, I don't even have to make that analogy. You can just imagine, like, the harder something is, the longer it takes to get there, and the harder things tends to subsume the easier things. So if this was removing seventh-year law students, then you would have to assume that it would also remove one through six, right? So just kind of right. obvious that when you start crawling up a, a learning ladder, which is what these AIs are doing, uh, that you're going to start at the bottom. So, you know, again, just that's why it's at the bottom. Now, like, are entry-level positions the most vulnerable? And I would say if, if you haven't hired an intern 
or if you haven't hired entry level people in a long time, or if you've never done it, because if you think about it, there's lots of fields in which you don't hire entry level people. You just hire experienced people. If you haven't hired entry level people in a while, what's really fascinating, and, and I'll admit this is both the part I love and I hate about bringing in both interns and low level uh, entry people, is that you forget what they don't know. Uh, you just spend so much time doing what it is that you do that you forget what it was like to start. Yes. And the things that where I spend the majority of my time and where I spend time working with my managers that hire entry level people is to remind them that most college graduates entering the workforce have no idea how to write an email. Absolutely no idea how to like communicate effectively, how to set up an ask and a set of constraints and a response and so forth. So most of what you're doing as an entry level anything is you're, you're typically first, you're learning a whole bunch of office style skills, communication, all those things that you just don't learn in, in college or anywhere else. And the second thing that you do is you're usually given tasks that either have already been solved or can easily be solved by somebody else in the organization, but they just don't have time to do it. And the reason you want to do that is you want to give easy enough tasks so that you can help that person learn how to navigate other systems. So I work in software. One of the hardest things to do with entry level people is to get them used to massive code bases that they just got introduced to. So you typically give them a very small assignment that's very easy, straightforward, is easily defined within a box that they can find. And, and again, the reason you do that for a person is to make it approachable. You like the first day, you don't want to crush that new person with, with some terrible work. Cause like you want to slowly build up their, their skills and their ability to inter, uh, interact with other people in the office. And you don't, again, you just don't want to crush them. So if you think about everything that I just said, like by almost definition, those tasks are absolutely going to be the ones that the machine given the same context can just go in there and do. And in fact, that's what everybody's do. Well, for the people who are doing it, that's what everyone's doing in software right now. The, I do it. I, we have these big lists of things that we have as a backlog in Charm IQ. And most of them, as long they, they don't affect customers. They're just kind of nice to have and things that you wish you had time to get to. But now I just spend an hour a week or, or uh, every three days, basically three times a week, where I just throw my dudes at it and just say like, solve these problems. And it does an amazing job at those because they're low risk, they're well-defined and small. And it just, it usually takes me longer to write out what the problem is than it does to solve that problem. Right. So, right. so again, just looking at everything that I just said, wrapping that whole thing up, lots of things are, are going to be up for this disruption. Right. The second is like most of what your entry level people are doing are by design, easy, boxable, well understood tasks that are easily handleable by the entry, by the AI. Of course. Yeah. So the, the learning roles, whether it's anything that, that has been mentioned, right? Any industry, it's more of the learning roles. And it makes sense, right? Be the most exp it's expensive to hire people. And it's really expensive to hire entry level people because of what you said from even the production side or tech side, even in the sales side. I, I remember ha handing, you know, not even entry level, but like mid level and still getting people to get familiar with our CRM system, with our reporting totally. system, with the internal ways of working with different departments and communication. And for an entry level person or someone three to five years, it's still there's still like a mountain to climb there in time. So you're right, giving them the smaller projects and problems to work on or smaller quotas or ramped quotas. But you're right, the AI can come in, has no learning curve, knows all of the ropes in terms of the messaging, the company, the policies, the procedures, because you're simply dropping those, those context docs in and they're off to the races, right? So, so for decades, we've been told and we've been telling young people, start at the bottom, learn the ropes, work your way up. But what happens if the bottom no longer exists and we're about to create an entire generation locked out of that opportunity before even getting started? I mean, there are people graduating today from college and from junior colleges ready to, you know, kind of hit the pavement. So let's talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. So I've had personal experiences with both family members and children of friends who just this cycle are, are in college, you know, sophomore, junior, senior they're looking for their first internship. And this was the first year that basically nobody in my Rolodex had internships open. And then on the flip side, again, people who were looking for those jobs 
had a terrible time. So I, on my personal experience, I've seen that this is absolutely happening right now. I think that there's a lot of reasons why that's happening from political brouhaha's that have been going on. So anytime you have instability in markets, people are less likely to hire. They're less likely to hire people at the bottom and like all of these types of things. And then also, you know, again, with all of this kind of disruption that people are starting to see, it starts to make sense to like, let your more advanced people use the tools and see if that can fill those gaps of what you would fill. And, and that's what's happening. Just as I mentioned earlier with myself, like even though I wasn't going to hire somebody junior, I would not hire somebody junior right now because again, the, the machine was just doing everything that I would expect it of that. Right. So then that gets us to the next phase, which kind of has two pieces, which is what does it mean when you don't have those jobs anymore? Um, and and like what 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 happens next? Like what, what does it look like? So we got kind of two sides. One is, yeah, we have a whole generation and I'm going to say it, it, this is basically the generation that got screwed with COVID. So double whammy on those poor folks. My heart goes out to all of them, which is they didn't get that very crucial to their career opportunity to get into an internship. Like that usually blossoms people's careers. It's the first time they're in the workplace, like all of these good things. So like we're already seeing those impacts based on the anecdotal evidence I've already put out. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day and, and has shown that that in fact, entry level people are are slowly creeping up in terms of the the jobless rates which is usually typically not what we see that indicator it tends to be less than right. the regular jobless rate so yeah. so not only anecdotal but like actual published results um and then the other side of this is well what what is what ha what does that ha what happens when you remove the bottom Mm -hmm. And so let's talk a little bit about this. So what's interesting as I was thinking through these problems is I had a very unique opportunity 10 years ago. I was working with a former co-founder of mine and he had some interesting ideas about law and he wanted to specifically see if we could better automate some of the tasks around what paralegals do. And this is 10 years ago. So we went around, we did all the standard stuff that you do as a, as a startup and you pre-startup at that point is, you know, you ask lawyers, like, what do they think? And what does this mean? And we actually had a really good bunch of conversations with people about what it would mean to the structure of lawyers and that, that whole establishment if you started chopping off the bottom. Because the, mm. the obvious question is, is if you have no paralegals, if you have no people starting at the bottom, then you have no funnel going up because they don't just magically appear in the middle of the funnel. Right. Like you have to start somewhere and go up. So, so it was really kind of whiplashy to me that like I've, I've had these discussions with people and people were freaked out 10 years ago and we knew we weren't going to be able to do it because the technology wasn't there, but they showed some really strong emotions about what does that mean? And mm. the short answer today is that exactly that, like I haven't seen the same kind of kick the feedback that I've gotten in the past. Like people weren't freaked out. People now seem like inevitability. But again, I, I don't think that they are picturing what happens. If you remove the first level, your first year entry person, then who moves to the second year, right? So like you start to lose your second year. And if you lose your second year, then you lose your third year. So, so that's all gonna happen, right? Cause like we're already starting to chisel that away. So we're already losing that upward funnel. And if you look at what that means and how that grows, that like people aren't just gonna cross from like a senior developer to like a senior, you know, legal analysts. Like that's not a parallel path you can right. make. You usually have to go through the bottom and go back up. So yeah, the obviously is going to happen. Like th this is, this is why I personally am so concerned about this is, is it for economic reasons, it makes sense for people during this time, again, with lots of changes happening in the world and so forth, where it's hard and you don't know whether or not you're going to have the money in your company to go forward because you don't know what purchasing is going to look like. So I get that you potentially would hire less people and you're hearing more about AI and the fact that it can do it and you're trying it and so forth. But I don't think people are thinking about what does that mean for the pipeline and the funnel as it moves down the road six, seven years. Yeah, no, exactly. And he, you know, he said the shift could happen in one to five years. It's sort of already happening. And, and one to five is not a slow burn. That's a sprint. As we all know, we've seen other technology kind of transformations happen. And one to five years, you can blink and that's a, a, a person's, you know, college time, right? So why is it happening so much faster than previous tech disruptions? Because, you know, when we, the internet happened, that wasn't a one to five year, you know, sprint that happened over kind of a decade and it's still happening. So what's happening? Why is it happening so much faster and what's different about AI? 